Hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to talk about the matrix of a linear transformation. So first of all, recall that a transformation is a rule that assigns a vector in Rn to a vector in Rn. And a linear transformation has the additional requirement that the sum of two vectors being transformed becomes the sum of the transformed vectors. So this T distributes and that scalars move in and out of linear transformations. So an example of a linear transformation is something like this following transformation from R2 to R2, where we take a vector u and we rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. So visually, it would look something like this. It takes a vector u to this vector t of u rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. To check that this is linear, if we have another vector v, then under this transformation, t will map v to t of v, which is this vector rotated 90 degrees. And then u plus v is this vector. If we rotate it 90 degrees, we get t of u plus v. But notice that t of u plus v is the same as t of v plus t of u. So when we rotate u plus v 90 degrees, then it's the same as rotating the u plus v vector or adding the two already rotated vectors. For scalar multiplication, if we make this u longer, then the resulting vector is a rotated vector and it's scaled the same length. So the scalar multiplication can move in and out of the linear transformation. And so this is indeed a linear transformation. Another example that was discussed in a previous video is this example. If we define a linear transformation by a multiplication of a matrix and a vector, then this is a linear transformation. Now, why is this particular example very important? Is because all linear transformations can be represented by a multiplication of a matrix and a vector. So how can we do such a thing? Let T be a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. This is any linear transformation. We haven't explicitly defined what T is, but we just know that this is a linear transformation. Next, let x be the vector x1, x2, xn. We can rewrite this vector as the following linear combination. Let x1 be multiplied to the vector 1 and then 0 everywhere else, plus x2 times 0, 1, and then 0 everywhere else, all the way to xn times a vector 0 everywhere except the nth position. The standard notation for these types of vectors is E, with the number 1 being the position where we have a 1. So here E2 is because 1 is on the second position, and then we have En because 1 is on the nth position. Now let's apply the linear transformation to this vector x. If we write out our x, we have t of x1 times e1 plus x2 times e2, etc. Now, we use the fact that t is a linear transformation to first split the sum up as something like this. The second property of a linear transformation is that scalars can move outside. So we can move each of the x1, x2s up to xn outside the transformation so that we get a linear combination of the vectors t e1, t e2, all the way to t e n with weights x1, x2 to xn. Now, matrix multiplication was defined to be a linear combination of its columns with weights x1, x2, xn as the vector component. So all of this equals this matrix multiplication where we have t e1, t e2, up to t e n are the columns of the matrix and then you have the vector of weights, x1, x2, up to xn. So if we let this whole matrix be A, then we can rewrite this as a matrix multiplication. Now notice that we assume nothing about T except that it's a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. We broke up the vector x into a linear combination of this form, and then we applied the transformation use the two rules about linear transformation, and we managed to get this form. So let's see an example and see why this is useful. Let's go back to our favorite example of rotation. 
by 90 degrees counterclockwise. Suppose we have a vector to 1. Then what would the vector be once it's rotated 90 degrees? Well, you can figure out the linear equation that corresponds to at least this segment, and you know that the slope is rise over run, so it's two run, one rise, so the slope is a half, and so the perpendicular uh, would be the slope negative two. And so we can so we can figure out that the output must be this vector, negative one, two. Now let's use matrices to see if we can make that problem a lot easier. To find the form of the matrix corresponding to this linear transformation, we need to know what the output of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1 are. That's pretty easy to see under this linear transformation. After rotation by 90 degrees, we have t of 1, 0 is 0, 1, and t of 0, 1 is negative 1, 0. So the matrix of the linear transformation has columns which are the outputs of the standard basis vectors, 1, 0, 0, 1, so something like this. Now instead of figuring out what the output of the vector 2, 1 is, we can apply it to this linear transformation using the standard matrix, this matrix multiplication, which we do row times column, so this root 0 plus negative 1 and 2 plus 0. So we get that the output vector must be negative 1, 2, without having to use anything about linear equations of lines and their reciprocal slopes.